Welcome to the National Quiz Choice Online News. I'm Robin Steinberg, and uh, today we have a very special guest with me uh, from Singapore, and she's none other than Miss Catherine uh, Ku. She just has launched her new book, uh, A Personal Life, and it's called Love, Live Dangerously, and Have Fun. And this book is now available at all good leading bookstores. You can place an order with Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, and uh, or even at your favorite bookstore at, ne at your nearby town. And if they don't have this title, please tell them to place this order. And it's by Catherine Koo. And uh, Miss Catherine, thank you for writing this wonderful book. Thank you. And thank you, Robin. you know, and uh, you know, and your tagline on the on the front cover it says a modest lesson on love. Hope, loss, and the gift of life. Now, what inspired you to write this wonderful book? How did it all start? Well, um, well, I am fifty-four this year, and um, I think in life we all learn lessons, and um, it's more because I want to inspire other women. Right, I'll go on to tell you later about what I want this book to do. But um, I realized as I went along that uh, women, especially in Asia, um, maybe in other parts of the world, but more so in Asia, we live for our children. We live for basically our kids. And um, and because the world is so global now, kids move off. You know, they find, uh, they go to Australia and settle down, you know. And then it comes to the basis of like, so yes, what's life after that? Right. And because women uh, devote their lives to basically their children, they find that after the children grow up, that part of their life after that is very meaningless or there's no more purpose because their purpose was for the children. And I want to tell women um, all over the world in Asia um, that um, there's life after your children have grown up, after you turn 50, because I'm 54 this year. So, um, and there's so much more you can do. So don't, don't, don't um don't tell yourself that okay I'm old and I can't do anything else because you have maybe about 20 30 years more and there's so much you can do for other women for other people you know with what life you have and speaking about life uh, could you elaborate more about uh, what is choices you know because a lot of women are trying to contemplate uh, what is choice you know, uh, is there is there such thing as uh, a collect is it a a, a cooperative uh, effort with a family with friends or is it just for my, for myself? How, uh, the, do choices that I make personally comes with consequences? Definitely, I think every choice comes with consequences. But before you make a choice, uh, you have to first be aware that you have choices, right? Most of us, uh, well. The, uh, the women I've been speaking to um, sometimes don't realize that, yes, I have a choice. But making a choice, having a choice, you have to think about accountability. You have to think about the responsibility of that choice, right? And so it's like when someone tells me, no, I've got no options, you know, um, um, I have no choice. It's actually a choice for them not to make a choice because we all have options. We all have choices. It's the road you want to take. And I think everyone... Um, women or men have to make that choice consciously like okay I have a choice of doing this and doing that so I choose this and because I choose this this is the path carved out for me so you have to be accountable and hold yourself responsible for that action and speaking about actions uh, taken by both uh, women and men of today and even for tomorrow um, what what do you have to say about uh, you know uh, w women uh, having to have a greater voice and wanting to live life to the fullest, like yourself, mm -hmm. you know, um, how can they? The question, the biggest question is that, how can I adapt change? It, what is the definition definition of change today? The word itself, for for the women and the men. Well, um, I think from beginning of time or, you know, as far as I know, change is a constant, you know, I mean, you hear people are saying that change is a constant, but it's so much more prevalent now, it's so much more um, happening now, you know, we, we have to change, whether or not we want to change or we don't want to change, you, you can't help but change, right, because the world is so global, right, and my definition of change is um, and in a certain sense, one has to be brave to change, because um, we, we have to learn to adapt, well, in my book, you said Charles Darwin said, um, you know, the, the, the species that will survive um, is the one that is most able to adapt to change. And I think um, women, uh, we, men or women, we, we fail to uh, understand that, um, yes, uh, all of us actually can adapt to change. Yeah, it's a mindset. 
right? And if you feel that you can't adapt to change and you have to change, then it makes makes you feel very frustrated. But at the end of it, um, we all change, you know, I mean, consciously, unconsciously, we all change, we all grow, we all adapt, right? And um, why, you know, be hard on yourself and say, no, I can't change, you know, I'm, I'm very afraid for change. Embrace it. That's what the book is about. You know, I mean, um, if you have to change, change it happily, I guess. Yeah. And the book also talks about, um, um, well, um, you know, if you want to be happy, no one can stop you. So you have a choice. Do you change or don't you change? And if you have to change, why not embrace it? What was your biggest challenge in life uh, for yourself uh, in choosing your path to life to the fullest and, uh, and, 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 and empowerment as well? You know, um, it, it, could you give uh, some uh, key insights for the women uh, today? Okay, um, challenges I think everybody goes through. Um, uh, there's one... Uh, noted philosopher, I, I forget his name, who said that basically um, life is a journey. In fact, I think a lot of people say that life is a journey and um, um, we all face challenges in those in times, right? And it's always an up and down. You you don't have a, a life that's smooth throughout. Then you won't learn, you won't learn change or you won't be able, you won't change. Or there will be, or you have a life that there's no failures. Because I think in life, when you fail, you learn, okay, you pick yourself up and you go on. And challenges everybody has. Um, I I do feel that um, well from day one when you're born, there are always challenges. And but some challenges are mind uh, are the mindsets rather than physical challenges, right? There are people who have um, uh, you know I mean who are not able bodied, but um, they have managed to climb Mount Everest or, or do a lot of things. So to me, a challenge is something that is in your mind, right? If you think you can do it, you'll be able to do it. Yeah, but the most important thing I think one has to face is to be brave with yourself, to be to be true to yourself. Because um, um, there are some things that you can't do well, and uh, to be very frank, nobody is perfect. We all have our own strengths. So important to understand your strength, to tap on your strengths, and then to move on with that. Because um, especially today, we uh, I I do feel that women are expected to do so many things. We have to work. We have to do so many things, and um, but we are not perfect. You know, so um, the challenge, I think, is for women themselves or maybe even men to think about um, what they can do best and then go on to do it. Yeah. And um, once you do something well and you enjoy doing it, the rest will follow. Right. So it's make, to make the choice to tell yourself that, yes, yes, I can do something well. I can be good at something and um, I'm going to follow that path. Yeah. Rather than try everything and then at the end, um, you know, try to do well in everything because nobody can. And speaking about the choices and challenges, um, when you wrote this book, especially love, live, uh, love life dangerously and have fun, uh, how has this, uh, you know, uh, journey of uh, of writing this book uh, that has an uh, impact your life, you know, how has that changed you? And were there any lessons that you have learned after finishing this wonderful book, uh, reflecting back, and? Who do you like to target uh, this book, uh, you know, the kind of audience that you want to reach out to? Right. Um, okay. Uh, I teach writing, actually, to young kids, you know, and um, I also started Parents School where I teach parents. Uh, if kids can write, parents can write too, right? And, um, well, I think basically in, in write, um, writing this book basically is very therapeutic because writing in any form is therapeutic. You share. Right, and um, reason why I want to do this book is also to help other women. I think I shared that in the beginning, um, and um, uh, the the thing the the thing about this is I want to start a series. Okay, and um, the first is written by me. The other would be more with other women because I'm intending to start a women's club where other women can come together, we share, and then um, that is very. Um, I think um, to share uh, your thoughts, your ideas, to share your your life, okay, it's um, it becomes very uh, what is the empowering, you know, to women, and then um, to basically being able to write a certain chapter of the book, their own life, right? And I, I want that to continue. My imprint actually is uh, for the book uh, for this series of books called Wicked Witty Women. Yeah, it's it plays on www, but it's about women. Yeah, and I want women to feel that there are choices. You know that um, there's so much more they can do, right? Um, yeah, basically that's that's why I did this book, and also um, well, the second book will be more about um, working with other women. 
okay, and uh, I and uh, to basically have a second bowl and a third bowl and a fourth bowl. It's something like chicken soup for the soul, but this is uh, women and um, how we can actually make our life uh, the best that can be. Now, can you also share with us about the uh, you know pushing the the concept of the unique classroom that you talk that you talk about, you know, and mm -hmm. what are your plans bringing the the, the program uh, regional, uh, you know, the unique classroom that is mentioned in your you know in your book uh, yes. by far. Yes, um, the unique classroom is a, a, a creative suite of programs that I put together. Um, it basically lends itself uh, at the end of the program for you to have an output. So um, the most famous of all is the Young Author Scheme, where we teach kids how to write books. And the kids have gone on to win competitions and been published, right? So the unique classroom um, basically uh, looks at how we can tap into your strengths and your creativity and come up with something. And the philosophy behind it is kids can write. Right. So uh, we put together a suite and we work with um, centers, with schools, international schools. And these kids go on to win awards and as well as to get published online in anthologies. Um, my first stop actually was Jakarta. I went down to the Jakarta Franchise Fair with some interest and we hope to follow up these leads. But my belief is that um, kids can dream. You know, um, uh, what we have our philosophy is uh, one child, one story, one dream fulfilled, right? which happens uh, for a lot of the kids that we work with because kids all have dreams and they want to put it down and we want that to come in for kids to basically write that book, you know, and um, you know, to start their journey of writing because writing uh, is not only about writing books, you know, you can write a lot of other things, yeah, so that's what we believe in. Um, speaking about beliefs, could you share with us your secret of finding happiness because a lot of people are talking about uh, what is happiness? No, where 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 can I find happiness? How can I live happy? Uh, like yourself, you have lived a, a very happy life, and you spoke about happiness even in in your book. Um, could you share share with us and elaborate? Of, and of course, uh, and uh, and of course, you know, if you if you dare, uh, you know, we would like you to uh, ask. Uh, you know, if you share with us, uh, probably a uh, a page or two of of your readings from uh -huh. the book. I wouldn't mind that, okay, but um, someone told me, um, I just can't remember who, that happiness is overrated, right? Um, happiness, uh, if you realize, is actually uh, something that's already inside you, right? It's, it's, it's the now. You know, I, I know of lots of people who tell me, if I had this, if I, if I had a million dollars, if I had whatever, I'll be happy. Then how do you measure happiness, right? Is it something that you have? Or uh, is it something that you feel? See, so to me, um, there's no secret of happiness. It's just basically being you. You know, telling yourself that, okay, this is who you are. You accept yourself for who you are. And um, you tell yourself, hey, um, you know, I'm happy now. I'm doing something that I enjoy. I'm doing something that, you know, I, I'm contributing to something. Um, even a housewife, a homemaker, right? Um, uh, it's, it's, it, they, they stay at home of choice, you know, to, to help their children, you know, and they can be happy. See, so happiness is not something that you qualify. Happiness actually resides in you. You just have to show it, yeah. And um, at the end of it, um, it's happiness is something that is of yourself. You have to be. You have to accept yourself and tell yourself, okay, this is who I am. I love myself for what I am, and because I love myself for what I am, others will love me. You see, so it's accepting who you are and being able to basically uh, help somebody have compassion for people, that's how people are happy. Because I think at the end of it, um, we have only one life. And to live it to the best, we have to learn um, to feel compassion for others, to tell yourself that, okay, I am what I am. I love myself. I know I can help others with what I have. And I like to basically work with others, right? So that is basically what happiness is. You don't have to search for it, very frankly. It is there in you. You just have to um, be yourself and, um, and just live your life. And speaking about living your life, uh, we have some questions right now coming in from Brunei. Uh, if you care, uh, just take two or three questions. Sure, no problem. Uh, there's a question from Brunei, and it's a woman. Uh, she likes to remain anonymous, and she says, uh, Dear uh, Catherine, uh, could you tell me, uh, you spoke about happiness in your book. Um, how, do I, how do I find happiness, uh, especially looking for Mr. Right? Uh, how did you manage to find your Mr. Right in your life? And is there such a thing as Mr. Right? <laughs> okay. Um, 
uh, Mr. Right will be looking for Miss Right, I guess. Yeah, but I think um, if you're talking about marriage, um, it's how you set your expectations. Um, if you set your expectations too high, you probably might might be very unhappy when you get somebody who don't meet your expectations. If you set your expectations too low, you might also not be happy. So I think one goes into marriage with no expectations. I went into a marriage, if you read my book, um, with, um, well, okay, I mean, uh, you feel comfortable with the person, you know, the person uh, sink in with whatever you have, this chemistry and all that, and then you get married. Yeah, and then, you know, it's learning how to live with each other. I've been married 30 years. Um, there's always ups and downs. There's no such thing as a perfect marriage, yeah? And uh, usually the marriage starts after the honeymoon, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's another question also coming from uh, South Korea, and she says, I, I got this book from a friend, uh, and, uh, I, and I'm deeply inspired. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Catherine, I, my question to you is that uh, how do I raise a happy family? Uh, how do you manage to raise your children the way you had? And could you give me three key advice in raising a, a happy family? Raising a happy family. Um, okay, I think it stems basically from uh, the husband and the wife, the couple, the father and the mother. Um, is to appreciate your kids for what they are. You know, all especially in Asia, we we have very very high expectations of our kids. We want them to study well, get a good job, and I think this is what all parents want. But is to be able to look at your kids and tell um, and tell yourself, hey, you know, I mean, um, yes, I want the best life for them. But at the end of it, is to be able to give them love and not to have expectations, not too high expectations. But um, yes, you can have expectations, but not too high. And second, um, all kids basically um have different strengths. Right. The kid might not be academic, okay, but um plays the piano well, enjoys playing the piano, okay? Right. So um grow him in his strength. Okay. And when your kids realize that you appreciate them for their strengths, um, then basically they will be able to do it better, right? And then uh basically uh they will be able to grow in their strength. And third is basically to trust. Trust each other, trust your children. You know, trust your husband, you know, that basically uh, when trust is given, there is responsibility. When a person feels trusted, they feel they want to do more. They want to be uh, more responsible for things. So I think if there's trust in the family and if everybody appreciates everybody for what they are and not what they want the person to be, then I think that is the, uh, the secret of a happy family. And one last question that's coming in uh, that is from Saudi Arabia. And this young girl, uh, it, she's only about 15 years old, she says, uh, Dear Catherine, I read your book and I love it very much. But I'd like to ask you, you, you title your book, Love, Live Dangerously and Have Fun. Um, did, did you ever live dangerously? <laughs> uh, and, and so, uh, could you elaborate more? Okay, love, live dangerous, j sorry, dangerously and have fun. It's um, basically um, living life dangerously. I think um, it's it's a mindset thing. Okay, it's being able to take risks, you know, and of course you have to take calculated risks, but being able to go with the flow. All right. Uh, I was uh, an uh, editor in chief uh, of two magazines, and um, I traveled. Yeah, and um, basically, it's this ability to tell yourself that, um, well, um, there are always choices to be made, you know, uh, in taking risks, right? And are you able to take that risk? That's danger. But it's a mindset thing because if we don't try, you never know. You know, if you don't take risks, you know, and live your life a safe life, you don't want to live until you're 70, 80, and then tell yourself, if I've done this, right? And um, if you see the balloon on the book, uh, basically, uh, I went hot air ballooning, and I had a bucket list to make, and this was uh, one of the things I had wanted to do, to go into a hot air balloon. And um, I think when you make that choice, and um, you, you, well, it's, it's dangerous in a certain sense, um, you begin to feel a sense of freedom about life, that you made the choice and you're happy making the choice and hey, you know, I mean, uh, just to enjoy the ride. So right now, Miss Catherine, uh, tell me what's next for you? What's next for me? Okay, to develop my creative education license because uh, I have plans basically to bring it into uh, various countries. First stop is Indonesia, it could be in, well, Australia and uh, probably Malaysia, right? To basically um, put forth my belief that all kids can write and um, if you can dream, you know, um, you can write, yeah. And um, to be able to communicate this, this um, you know, this writing and to 
probably build the next Booker Prize winner, hopefully from a country in Asia, in Singapore, hopefully, and um, to be able to empower other women you know, um, to uh, to work with them. You know, to tell them that hey, life is um, it's um, it's just out there. You just have to go and live it. You know, and to love it. You know, and to embrace life, not endure life. You see, that is basically what I feel. Um, every woman has a choice for every man, in fact, also. Yeah. What would you like to tell the world uh, after you have lived this life? Uh, would you have any advice for them? Mm. Not really, actually, because I, I think everybody has to live their life. You know, I mean, I hope this book inspire other people um, to, to do the same that I did. All right. Um, but I always uh, believe that it is a mindset change. Physically, I think everybody can do it. It's just basically telling yourself that you can do it. Yeah. And um, also, hopefully, to start my women's club. And um, well, it can be online, too. You know, so uh, basically for all women to come together and to write and uh, to have um, a voice, I guess, you know, about uh, how to live their life uh, to the fullest after they turn, uh, well, I guess, 50, you know, after their children have grown up. Because I think it's so sad that women um, um, always uh, live their life for others, you know, for their children. And then after that, they find that there's nothing much, but there's so much things to do. After your children have grown up, after you know, um, so the empty nest syndrome, which exists a lot in Asia, um, is something that I hope uh, with this book will will not put an end to, but um, have more people coming forward and living their best life. And living the best life is well said. Uh, and folks, please take note. Uh, love live dangerously, uh, and have fun by Catherine uh, Ku, who is now um, make this book available at all leading bookstores or all, all around the world. Uh, you can place an order with Amazon.com, Barnes and Nobles, and even with your nearest uh, best uh, neighborhood bookstore. And if they don't have a copy of it, please place an order uh, of this book. Um, and to end it, uh, could you share with us probably a page or two? Oh or, yeah, sure. Um, I have to get a copy of the book. Could you hold uh, on? Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, now um, let me see. What will we which will be your best chapters? <laughs> um, okay, I had a book launch and um, I had page uh, just in two. Okay, um, I I ended off basically this book. Um, one of the chapters. Every chapter has got a story, a message, and this is chapter eighteen. And chapter eighteen, um, well, said talks about telling my story my way. Right, and um, I just want to share this this thing that um, this para that basically works for me that is about my life, and uh, I hope will be uh, every woman who wants to live life that way. Um, I spoke about my father, so now I'm gonna um, continue this. Daddy's favorite song was "My Way" by Frank Sinatra. It became my song as I struggled through tough decisions in my marriage, as I watched my daughter settle into university far away from me, but knowing they will learn to grow up to make their own decisions. It became my song when I took the reins of Jana's education and created the Young Authors theme, something unheard of. Hey, can children write? It became my song when I founded Experiences and Experiments books to publish my Young Authors works because no one wanted to publish children's writing. It is my song now as I embark on launching my license, the publishing ecosystem I spent 10 years working on. All it takes is a master licensee, someone who believes in building the next generation of thinkers and writers. And this is the song, but I shall not sing it. I want to live my life to the fullest, and when my end is near, be able to say, I did what I had to do, and saw it through without exemption. I climbed each charted course, each careful step along the byway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. And, and thank you for ending a high note, uh, Ms. Catherine Ku. And folks, there you go. Please uh, place an order of a copy of Love, uh, Live Dangerously, and uh, Have Fun, uh, written by Ms. Catherine Ku. And this book is available at all leading uh, good bookstores, Amazon.com, Barnes and Nobles, and also at your nearest uh, bookstore at your neighborhood. And once again, I'm Robin Steinberg. Thank you for joining me here at the National Quiz Choice. Have a good week ahead. Thank you.